The other day, I was looking up scary aquatic animals, and I found the alligator snapping turtle. I had heard of these things before, but hadn't really looked into them much, and I was very surprised to see just how scary they actually were. The largest ones could definitely bite your hand off with relative ease, maybe even your head. It made me think, what if there were some that were large enough to swallow you whole? How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boy Lai Hobby Time. I found these IMEX historical figures in 1 to 70 second scale, came with some canoes and a raft, and a few little figures, so I decided to make some adventurers on a river. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. This is set in my Wild Western universe, so I wanted to customize the raft with some fun stuff. I had this motorcycle with a sidecar. We'll be using these pieces as greeblies. And the box for that says, not for baby zero to 14 months. I would say probably extend that out a few years, but that's just me. I also got out a few of my other favorite kit bashing things, including some little replica World War II weapons. And I started gluing things to the back of the raft. I started with some larger pieces to make up the frame of this piece of equipment. And then began gluing things in random places, trying to make them look like they had some kind of a purpose. I'm not really sure what this machine does yet. Maybe it's a radio or a generator. Maybe it's both. It's not the engine for the raft. This thing is just being transported down river by the raft. Uh, I also made a little antenna out of a 50 caliber machine gun tripod leg. After I had put the little cargo on, I added the guy, and those were done. After I had made a mold for the resin to be poured into, I began carving a riverbed. I used some styrofoam and my hot wire table for this, and made a nice snug fit. Maybe a little too snug. I used the handheld hot wire to create a little bit more variation in the surface, and then I added a few large rocks to the riverbed. I used some masking tape to protect the sides of the foam from the next step. I then mixed up some plaster, paint, and Mod Podge, just like I always do, except this time I added a little bit of fine-grained sand to help add some texture. Spread that across all of the foam right up to the tape, and the tape did prevent any of the plaster from messing up my nice snug fit. Peeled off the tape, and I left it to dry. This video was sponsored by Anycubic. They sent me their new DLP resin printer to try out. This printer is called the Photon Ultra. Anycubic is going to be launching a Kickstarter for this printer starting September 15th, but they sent me this one a little bit early so I could play around with it and see what I thought. It's a DLP printer, which means digital light processing, which is basically a tiny high definition UV projector that shines against the mirror and then up onto the build plate instead of the typical LCD screen. It's more accurate than an LCD screen, so the benefit of this printer is higher levels of detail lower levels of power consumption, and an impressive 20,000 hour lifespan. I will include additional information on the printer and the Kickstarter in the description if you're curious about that. After the machine was all set up, it was time to load some resin into the vat. This is actually some special DLP resin. They will release it under a different name. You should always shake your resin very thoroughly before you use it, and always wear gloves to make sure it doesn't get on your skin. It's pretty bad for you, even if it looks a lot like Thai iced tea. I was initially going to design my own turtle, but I ran out of time, and I was able to find a very nicely detailed model online. I'll put a link to that below. Ran that through the slicing software, put it in the printer, and I let it do its thing. 
While I was printing, I moved back to the riverbed to add some detailing and some texture. Spread on some scenic glue using a paintbrush, made sure the whole thing was covered, and then I sprinkled on some pebbles and various sizes of sand. Use some isopropyl alcohol, just like Luke Towen says, to help it spread out a little bit better. I used some watered down glue to seal it all together. Once that was dry, I primed it with a flat black primer and I dry brushed on some brown. After that was done, I added some driftwood. Due to some user error, it actually took quite a few tries to get a successful print out of this printer. I had my settings wrong and I had to readjust the supports. But I finally did get a very nice looking print out of it. I probably could have used a different model to show off just how detailed this thing can go. But I'm really happy with this. The details came out great and the layer lines are pretty much non-existent. I cured the turtle in the UV curing machine, and then I primed everything with a zenithal highlight, and I started painting. The inspiration for this colorway was one of those turtles at the beginning, the black one with the orange spots. I thought that looked pretty cool, very balroggy. You know, it's a slow moving, powerful thing. It doesn't have to be fast and Agile it just creeps up on you and then when when you realize it's there it's too late. If you haven't seen videos of how alligator snapping turtles eat stuff, I saw this video recently of a guy who has a baby one and he gives it like shrimp and bugs and stuff and uh, it's about the same size as this one actually, only his is real. And even at this size they're pretty vicious. Then it was time to prep the resin. I stuck the turtle in the mold and I took down the dimensions of the mold to make sure I got my volumes correct. It came out to be just about 1500 milliliters, so I measured that out between two measuring cups. I then added some pigments of black, brown, green, and blue to make a watery color. Once I had that all mixed together, I poured it in the mold. I then sat and popped all of the bubbles as those formed with a butane torch. This brand of resin suggests you do that for an hour, and I'm glad I did because I noticed that the mold was leaking. What had happened was I had sprayed a silicone spray into the mold to act as a release, and it had made its way through the cracks and onto some of the pieces of tape. With the pressure of the resin, it was just a little too much, so cracks formed and resin was pouring out onto the table. In general, it was just a rookie mistake. So I remade a new mold, lined every side and corner with some silicone glue. I also changed the resin. I like the clearer look. I want to be able to see the turtle and the riverbed better. So in the end, it actually worked out okay. I then cleaned up all of the edges with a knife and it was time to add some ripples to the top. I used this Woodland Scenics ripple effects, put that on there with a popsicle stick. I was really happy with how that looked. I had these adventurers already painted by the time I filmed that last section, so they were ready to go right into the ripples as soon as that had been put down. The guy on the raft has a little stick and he's pushing some logs out of the way. Then made a little base out of some basswood, painted it with some black 3.0, and called it good.
that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to all of my patrons. Your support means so much to me. Thank you again to Annie Kubik for sponsoring this video. Be on the lookout for that Kickstarter for the Photon Ultra. It starts September 15th. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next time.